Hey guys, it's Lushy, and today we're back with another movie review. Now today we're going to be doing The Invisible Man. I'm not crazy. He's in the room right now, but we can't see him. Okay, so this movie came out this year. Elizabeth Moss is in it as Cecilia. She's amazing. Um, Oliver Jackson Cohen plays The Invisible Man, or Adrian. And it's directed by Lee one l and it's a Blumhouse production, so that's all you really need to know to watch it. Fantastic movie. I'm not even going to sugarcoat it. Some movies I like to give in-depth reasons as to why it's so amazing, and I'm going to get into it, but uh, all you need to know is it's amazing and watch it. Okay, so honestly, the rest of this video is pointless, because that's all you really need to know. Okay, so this movie kind of starts without giving spoilers. It kind of starts after a lot of stuff have already happened. I mean, you don't see a lot of the stuff that led up to the events at the beginning. But later on, you'll hear about it. You'll hear about why certain things are happening and why the beginning makes any sense whatsoever. So essentially, the movie, Cecilia is just trying to get a life of her own. And, well, Adrian just can't let her go. And that's basically the plot that I can give you without spoiling a ton of stuff. And in general, it's a very suspenseful movie. It relies way less on the jump scares. A lot of movies these days is nothing but jump scares. They, they like these pop-out scares all the time to get you to jump out of your seat. But to me, that's not really how you creep someone out. The way that you really do it is by providing that suspense. And the suspense, maybe a jump scare. Don't make your movie all about jump scares. I do not like it when people just make a jump scary horror movie. Have I liked movies that are mainly jump scares? I have. Keep not going to lie to you. But in general, I prefer a movie that is dark, creepy, suspenseful, and then the occasional jump scare is totally fine with me because they build the atmosphere, and this is why jump scares work. Now, if you just make your movie jump scare, jump scare, jump scare, you're going to get used to it, and it's not going to do anything for you whatsoever. But if you have a suspenseful movie where there's you know, like 30 minutes of nothing but story and character development, then all of a sudden, boom, a scare happens. It's going to scare you because uh, it's so unexpected. Uh, and that's why this movie works so well is because it builds on all that stuff that I mentioned, you know, character development, plot, you know, story and such. And I wouldn't be able to see him. And then the creepy stuff happens. And to be honest, not trying to take shot at, shots at the Invisible Man, but it's not even so much a horror. It's more of like a hmm, it's like a horror thriller because it's partly horror, but mainly thriller because a lot of stuff that happens in this isn't scary. It's more like shocking thrilling it's exciting um but i wouldn't really classify it as straight horror uh like i said there's some things in it that i guess you can consider but mainly thriller i'd say um but everything in this movie is just well done crafted very well uh beautiful acting from elizabeth moss and oliver jackson cohen uh i feel like he doesn't get enough credit for playing adrian and the invisible man i people talk about elizabeth moss and i totally agree she deserves tons of recognition for playing Cecilia. Amazing cast right there. Just just her alone was amazing. But Oliver doesn't get as much credit, and I feel like it's important to mention that the movie wouldn't really be that good without him in it. Because if you just had a movie with nothing really going on, I think the fact that you have a great actor with Oliver playing this character, that's why the movie really works so well. Otherwise, it would be a little bit more flat because the villain wouldn't be that that interesting. So, sure, he plays a bad guy, and you're probably going to hate him because he is kind of a it's kind of a dick to to say the least, uh, and way worse than that to be honest. But so you you're not meant to really like him. It's just me personally. I've always loved villains more so than the heroes. Uh, like in every almost every case, except for like DC hero villains. I don't really like the DC villains. They're kind of lame in my opinion, besides Joker, but that's a whole side thing. In general, I love villains more so than the main characters because nobody, nobody really likes the villains. They're like, oh, I can't wait to see that villain get killed, or I can't wait to see something bad happen to him, or I want to see that villain die. It's like, I'm the opposite. I'm like, I get upset when I see the villain getting hurt. I'm like the only one probably that feels that way. But uh, the thing is, like I said, back to what I was saying is Oliver makes the invisible man amazing. 
like without him, I feel like it, like, again, the movie would have been a bit more flat. Elizabeth Moss probably would have wound up carrying the movie with if they didn't have him in it. But I just don't think the invisible man scenes, you know, with the invisible man suit would be that good without him. Cause the voice he provides just fits the character so well, the way that he plays the character fits it so well. And it's very, uh, it's not scary the way that he plays the character. It's more like freaky because you know, he's there. Like there's so many signs in these movie in this movie that he's there and so many little details, uh, that just almost shock you. And you know what? Maybe I'll talk about one of them in case people missed it in watching the movie. I'll talk about that later. That way I'll tell you guys to click off if you don't want spoilers. Uh, but anyways, this movie, fantastic. I literally can't say a bad thing about it. So in that case, I'm going to have to go ahead and give it a 10 out of 10. I mean, I, if I, if, if I had something bad to say about it, I would. And I'm not just giving it a perfect score because it's Blumhouse. Uh, because I'm not, I don't just give a score like that just because I love something. Uh, if I don't like it, I'll, I'll mention I don't like it. But this movie gets a 10 out of 10, perfect on all spectrums, acting wise. You know, the 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 amazing cinematography, the music by Benjamin Walsh, fantastic. Leo Lee Wanell's Lee directing, his writing is fantastic. Uh, the lighting schemes in this movie is also very beautiful. The scenery is fantastic. The act, acting is amazing. Elizabeth Moss and Oliver Jackson Cohen. I can't say anything bad about it. I love everything. Okay, so here's where that spoiler comes in. So if you don't want a spoiler, go ahead and click off. Okay, so I'll give you five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. So basically, <laughs> there's the scene early on where she's cooking breakfast. She puts the knife down on the counter to go wake up Sydney, the little girl. The knife disappears off the counter. Like you literally see it fly off to the bottom, off the counter, to the floor, I suppose, and disappears. You don't see it for a while. Uh, and it leaves you to wonder what happened to the knife, right? Where to go? Later on, she calls uh, Adrian's phone. Here's the phone in the attic. Goes upstairs, finds the phone, finds a butcher knife wrapped in plastic. And here's where the genius comes in. When she takes it out of the package, uh, she gets her DNA on the handle, right? So later on, when her sister gets killed, her DNA is on the handle, and that's how they're able to get her. I think that was so brilliant. And like I don't like I was mind blown. Like it took me four watches to realize that's what happened because I was like, where did that knife come from? What's the significance of that knife? Because they literally didn't have a knife on the table, not not a kitchen knife like that. So I was kind of confused. But whenever I thought back to that and whenever I watched it a few times, I finally realized I was like, that's the knife. It's the same knife from the counter, same knife from the attic. I was like. My mind just blew in that moment. I was like, there's no way. That's insane. Lee Wan L, he threw that one past me the first few times. I figured I'd mention that in case other people didn't notice it. Uh, like if you seen in, if you saw it in theaters and maybe didn't notice it, uh, or if you watched it on DVD even and haven't noticed it. But either way, I just figured I'd mention that because that was a very cool detail that I feel like a lot of directors wouldn't have done or would have wouldn't have even cared about. Uh, but Leo Wynell is amazing, and he loves to throw stuff past you, and he certainly does. And there's a few other scenes where you'll see a chair, and it looks like there's something in it. And in general, the camera will pan to a wall. While, while you can't really see anything, uh, you can almost 99% of infer that he's standing there watching. It doesn't just pan and then go back to her. It sort of pans, lingers for quite a while, like almost to show that someone's standing there. Then it pans back, and then she turns around and sees something, or thinks she sees something, or she more like feels it, uh, like that presence you get when you feel like you're being watched. Uh, that's kind of the thing that happens, and I think that's brilliant. I mean, it uses the whole Invisible Man aspect perfectly. Like I said, the creep factor, it's there. Uh, the suspense, it's there. The scares, not really there, but whenever they do happen, they're done brilliantly. Uh, and again, God, the cinematography and the music is beautiful. And the acting, don't even get me started on that. That's the best part of the movie. And um, the suit the suit of the Invisible Man, it's awesome looking. I mean, it's so futuristic. It's straight out of the future. And uh, I, I, I have respect for the original. I'm not going to be one of those people to just say it's the original, so I love it. I don't really love it, but I have respect for it because it is a classic film. Uh, I think it's a little goofy. Uh, can't take it serious whatsoever, much like most older movies. I just can't take it serious. Silent movies, Charlie Chaplin movies, I mean, those are meant to be funny, but 
Uh, silent movies just never did it for me. Neither did the old classics. Besides like Frankenstein and Dracula 1931. Those are really good and I can actually watch them and enjoy them. Uh, I have a few laughs just because, like I said, it's goofy. The acting in some of those movies are just goofy. But in general, I respect all the classics because they created the genre. They helped found movies in general. Not just not just horror movies. They helped found, like find or like create more movies. So without those classics, where would we be? You know, probably without movies. <laughs> uh, but uh, anyways, thank you guys so much for watching my review of the. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching my review of the Invisible Man. Did you watch it? Did you enjoy it? Uh, do you agree with my opinions on it, or do you not? Let me know down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed this. Subscribe if you've not already. Hit that bell to get notified anytime I make a video or a stream. Keep up to date with the channels. I'll some other than that depth. Blah, blah. Keep up to date with the channels. I have some crazy going on. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. There you are.